don't tell anybody this. Shh, don't just share between us. There's some positive stuff on retirement planning, but we don't want anyone to know. How can I get that sweet, sweet YouTube money if I'm telling people positive stuff as opposed to saying the dollar is crashing, we're all going to be living in exact loss. So shh, don't say this to anybody because I want to make sure I get that YouTube revenue by scaring people. All right, my man, uh, Sean, has sent me this from the EBRI, and I love EBRI. Talk about EBRI a lot in my book, You Can Retire on Social Security. It's free on Kindle Unlimited. I can't remember how much it costs. Five bucks for this, something like that. Um, I just, off the top of my head, I can't remember. And you should buy it because I proved that you can retire on Social Security. And the EBRI, once again, shows up with real live data as opposed to fake nonsense. Like, oh, the sky's falling. I just, I get so sick of that, dude. Look, once you read uh, Jeremiah in the Bible, you realize that if you think the sky is falling the way we're living life, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, dude. Just be like Jeremiah be thrown into a cistern. No. No. Every time I do a video, Papa says, I want to be on the TV too. You can come You can come up here. No one's stopping you. There he is. He just wants to say, hey, look, there he is. Okay. There you go. Yes, sir. All right. So let's keep going, diving into this here. So this is from uh, Dateline October 6, 2022 by Bridget Bearden, who's a post hole digger. Just goofing on you, Bridget. Uh, the 2022 Spending and Retirement Survey, Understanding the Pandemic's Impact. Now, actually, the best thing about this article, it doesn't even matter about the pandemic. It does. It talks about that and also talks about the inflation. And yet you're still coming out like, huh? Things are looking pretty good out there, my friends. So the EBRI, and I love EBRI. You know, they had uh, Michael Hurd, Susan Wildwild, Rowell Wetter. They've had a number of people I follow in the EBRI, and it just, they crush. All right, so nearly 2,000 American retirees between 62 and 75 were surveyed to assess how spending patterns and retirement well-being have changed since 2020, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Similar to 2020, 7 in 10 said Social Security is a major source of their income. How could that possibly be? They must all be eating cat food and ramen noodles. Approximately half of retirees said they spend less than 2000 bucks a month. What? I thought we had a... <laughs> that just... <laughs> this just... <laughs> These are people they're surveying, my friends. This isn't made up stuff. This is real live data. Ay, ay, ay. Approximately half of retirees said they spend less than 2000 bucks each month. Well, a third said they spend uh, between uh, 2000 and 4000 a month. So basically... Uh, that's about 75% of the population of surveys in this sur survey spends less than 4000 bucks a month in retirement. All right. Uh, another, uh, basically 20% spends over 4000 bucks a month. Only 3% are spending $7,000 a month. And this is with a 2000, they surveyed 2000 Americans. We'll talk about that, sir, who they surveyed. On average, retirees reported that nearly a third of their monthly income goes to housing. What? That second largest exp expenditure is food. Let's dive into this a little bit. Because here's a CPI. This is CPIE. It's for elderly. It's not that much different from CPIU, which is what most of us use. But CPIE is once you're over 62. Where they show the weightings for housing is 47%. And yet in the real world, a third of your expenditures go to housing. And we'll even dive into that a little bit deeper to show you how it, you don't even have to pay that much once you hit it. But if you follow my advice, you'll be fine. I'm just telling you. Food is only 12%, which is after transportation. What? Medical care and food are close. But look at that. Housing is 47% of the uh, weightings for CPI, for inflation. Food is third after transportation. And yet, in the real world, we just talk, talked to you about, that's not the case. Housing is a third and food is next. Actually, it's funny because when we actually look at the reality CPI, what I'm doing here, I weigh food at 23% of expenditure and housing at 18%. I'll show you how we do that in a little bit. Again, that makes sense. And I show medical care is the second largest expense after food, medical care, and then housing. Where, they, again, they have medical care at a, a fourth expense, food at third, housing way ahead of at number one, and then transportation number two. It's, the CPI is just is dumb. Don't use it. And that will be my forthcoming book. Relax and retire, debunking inflation fears. All right, uh, let's see. Retirees are more likely to report that their spending is much higher or a little higher than they can afford in 22, 
2022 versus 2020. All right, so hear that. People are going to say, oh, see, retirees are reporting. In fact, what you could do if you want to be fearful, you could say, uh, here, let me get my camera. So you see, so 27% of the survey said uh, their spending is much higher or a little higher than they can afford in 2022 versus 17% in uh, 2020. So what we could do, in fact, maybe I'll do a video on that just to show you how this works. We can say, that's a dip 10 divided by 17. So we have 59% more people say their spending is more than they can afford in 2022 than in 2020. That's a great video to do to show you how fear sells. It's crazy. And yet, even that, only 27% are saying that their spending is higher, much higher, or a little higher than they can afford in 2022. With the high inflation. That means 73% are saying the exact opposite, but we're all gonna focus on the negative. Among those who decreased either their essential or discretionary spending since the pandemic. What, you can actually do that? You can actually cut your spending? Who knew? The most common reason was cited by nine out of 10 was a concern about inflation. I thought we couldn't cut our spending. Uh, yes, you can. When things get tight, you tighten your belt, shocking. Approximately seven in 10 retirees said they have three months of emergency savings. What we're gonna find here is that we have black and Hispanic retirees. Those are poor, those in other poor households, poor whites. Those with low financial knowledge and those with poor self-reported health status were less likely to report three months of, expended, of emergency savings. Basically it's gonna be, I, I, you can, they wanna throw black and Hispanic in here. I actually think it's a poor self-reported health status, frankly. You gotta get your health up, dudes. All the, that's number one priority, you gotta get your health up. And if you're working a job that's literally killing you, you freaking need to stop. Anyway, so again, nine in 10, the people who decreased or their dis, uh, essential or, or discretionary, essential, they decreased their essential spending. They did so out of fear of inflation. On average, retirees rate satisfaction in retirement as 7 out of 10. What? 70% of the population is satisfied in retirement? That number hasn't changed hardly at all. And this is after the pandemic and after the high inflation in 2022. It was 7.4 in 2020. Now it's 7% in 2022. So we can blame that to Biden, by the way. Because since Biden took office, 58 more percent people are spending, they don't have enough money. And we got uh, a 4.4 to divide by seven, whatever that is, are, are not satisfied in retirement. So we blame Biden. Retiree segments who reported lower senses of well-being across the measures of standard of living, alignment, and satisfaction. Okay, so again, retiree segments who reported lower senses of well-being include those without defined benefit or annuity income, those who were not married, and those who are female. Interesting. So again, this is the Democratic Party, single females, 100%, because they Democrat preys on their fear. A lot of it's unnecessary, but they prey on their fear. Married people are happier and married, not all the time, trust me, I, I get it, but married people are more financially secure. It's just a fact, dude. Be married, be more financially secure. That's just a fact. I just found it interesting, though, uh, those who are lower senses of security had no pension or no guaranteed income by an annuity isn't that interesting they're also not married and they're single and they're female so let's take a look at who these uh the survey sample uh it's a great segment of society so we got basically 63 percent were under the age of between 62 and 69 63 percent um, and then another 14% were between 70 and 71. So a quarter of the population surveyed was over 72. 75% was under 72. Interesting, 55% were female, which seems a little bit not uh, a little bit, I don't say discriminatory, uh, heavy on the female side. And we know women are generally more um, single. That's all there's to it. Single women generally the basis of their Democratic Party, and the reason they are is because the Democratic Party pushes fear. That's all there is to it. Do the Republicans do it? Yes, I mean, stupid Lindsay, I get it. But, you know, the Russians are going to get stupid. But generally speaking, financial matters, the Democratic Party pushes fear. They're going to take away your Social Security. So stupid. 
Interesting here is marital status, only 53% were actually married. 20% were divorced or separated. 13% were widowed. 10% were single. So uh, there's a nice broad base of women uh, and many single people are not married people. I, that was good because, you know, if you have 80% married, your, your survey is going to be way geared towards more financial security. That's all the fact. So we have women is the predominant amount of people they surveyed. Um, and a lot of single and not married or divorce A's or even widow people. So and, and, uh, single filing, not married filing, joining with taxpayers. And it, it still came out 7% of the population was still satisfied in retirement. Check this out. 80% were evil whites and 20% were the, the great, you know, non-whites, so, you know, the, the who we shall respect. Um, uh, right here. Uh, right there. 42, 63, was that 42? Yeah, about 63%, then my number's right, had less than $250,000 of financial assets. That does not include housing assets, but they're not talking about housing assets. Again, look at that. I think my number's right there. Yeah, 60, something like that. 42, I got to do it now because I, I, what is that? 42 plus 17. Is that 69%? 42 plus 17. Why am I so jacked? 59%. So 60% of the population had money, had less than $250,000 of financial assets. And 50% didn't even graduate college. I mean, it's a good, a good population survey here. All right, so let's keep going, which is good. More than 55% retired earlier than expected, while 40% said they retired about when they expected, and 4% later. 55% retired earlier. And I just want to keep going back to this right here. The numbers are right here. Seven in 10 rate their satisfi that they're satisfied in retirement. Seven is their satisfaction level. That's, a sat that's satisfied. Seven in 10. And yet 55% said they retired earlier than they expected. Where was that? I just saw it. Um, the, or I want to chalk with the average versus median. The average value of current assets was 532, but the median was 146. Again, the 532 is because the, the rich people up, uh, where did I go here? Is the, the, the skewing right here. These people right here skew the survey size uh, for averages. So just always remember that the median was 146. And these people are all over the age of 62. This is financial assets, not your home, by the way. All right, let's keep going. Uh, those with a strong self-reported health status, those with high satisfaction, and those working with a financial advisor were more likely to do volunteer work. So strong self-reported health status and highly satisfied in retirement. There, you think those two things are mutually exclusive? No, they go hand in hand. Healthy is going to make you be more satisfied in retirement, which can be more likely to do volunteer work and more likely to have no debt. Let's keep going, man. Um, overall, one in three have experienced working after being from retirement. Uh, being uh, One in three have experienced working after being retirement. After being retired. Jeez, can't skip my words out. So a third worked after being retired. Why did they do that? Well, the top three reasons... Uh, additional income for discretionary expenses, such as travel and gifts. That is not, they're working to put food on the table. They're working for to increase their income for fun things like travel and gifts. This isn't working to make, men's, make, end meet, make ends meet. Work is also rewarding. They enjoy working and socializing. And to have additional resources for unexpected expenses. I just, while retirees did not indicate that having opportunities to socialize drove their return to work and retirement to a great expense, extent, it was one of the most common factors in having some impact. I, I mean, you can't sit there and say these people are working because they ran out of money. The, the evidence isn't there for that. Look at this. Yes, I currently work. 5% of the population. Yes, I've worked in the past after retirement. 67% of the people said they haven't worked after retirement. And yet they're only spending on average, what is it, 2000 3000 bucks a month or something like that. Crazy. How do people look at this? Oh, I thought this was interesting. Types of debt outstanding. 30% had a mortgage. Hmm. 
That means 70% did not have a mortgage. Now, you can't say that. That means they own their home outright because you have renters. But still, 30% had a mortgage. All right. Now, we go uh, our level of satisfaction was 7 out of 10. Well, that means 70% of the people had no mortgage. But that again, you can't make that because that doesn't include renters. But still, look at this. Less than half had credit card debts. Less than a quarter had uh, car loans. Some had medical. Why is that up? 11, 11. That's weird. Some had medical debts. 30% dropped their home equity line of credit. Student loans are 4%, business loans. And they, there's no, they didn't, I don't know why they didn't ask that in 2020. It's like, why would you not ask that? It's kind of weird. I, so check this out. Among those who had debt, description of the manageability of personal debt was similar to 2020. 46% of retirees with debt, 46% of retirees who had debt reported an easily manageable level of debt or no debt. I wish they'd separate who had no debt. So almost half of the people who had debt reported as easily manageable. That's kind of confusing there because it said uh, other people had debt. Anyway, be it as it may, still. The, but most had said it was easily manageable. 43% report a manageable level of debt. So we have 46% plus 43%. That's 89% of the people saying their debt was manageable or easily manageable. 11% reported an unmanageable or crushing level of debt. Retirees that were dissatisfied with their retirement, rating 1, 2, and 3 on a scale of 1 to 10, were two and a half times as likely to report unmanageable debt. Shocking. It's, it's just, it's about debt. You don't have unmanageable debt. You're not, you're going to be happy in retirement. 46% said they own their home free and clear, while 30% said they lived in a house with a mortgage and 20% said they were renting. So 76% were homeowners. CPI is not, a, is not attributable to them because 46% had their home free and clear. And of the 30% of people had a mortgage, they have a fixed rate mortgage. I guarantee it's not a year over year adjustable rate mortgage. 20% said they're renting. Additionally, those who are dissatisfied with retirement included those with poor self-reported health care. A uh, health... Uh, Health status, I should say. You got to get healthy, dude. Pay off your debt and get healthy. Median Social Security claiming age was 63. Half people claim before that. Half people claim over that. 63. Retirees living in households with incomes of 80000 or more. Remember, it's only 3% of the population reported a median Social Security claiming age of 64. Relating to employer-sponsored defined benefit plans, 35% said they had a major source of income. 18% said they're a minor source of income, and 46% said they had no defined benefit plan. So if you had, that's a pension. If you had a, a employee or a pension, a third said it was a major source of their income. Tw uh, 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 20%, 19%, a fifth said it was a minor source, and 46% said it was a, a no source at all. So almost half said there was no defined benefit plan. And then you take 46 plus, I mean, basically two thirds, almost two thirds of the people said it was a minor source of income, if at all. Regarding employer sponsored defined contribution plans, 36% say they are a major or minor source of income. While more than half, 64%, said they were not a source of income. Oh, that's good. So almost two thirds of the population says a defined contribution plan wasn't even a source of income. Most retirees said personal retirement savings or investments outside of an IRA was a source of income. What does that tell you? This whole thing, we need to expand IRAs. We need to expand IRAs or else people won't be able to save. It's, it's so freaking fake. Most retirees said personal savings or investments outside of an IRA was a source of income, 61%. So how can you sit there and say, we got to expand IRAs? It's just all fake, and yet people fall for it. It's crazy. Average monthly expenditures, housing expenses were 30%. Out-of-pocket medical was only 5 Food expenses, 25 Transportation is 12 I just showed you transportation was the number two category in CPI. It's stupid. Medical and health insurance, 8 
Out-of-pocket medical expenses, five. So that's 13%, just like what I show you. Housing, food, medical, housing. Food, medical, housing. And once your housing costs are paid off via no mortgage, it's going to be food, medical, and still housing will be a pretty big extent because they got property tax and homeowners insurance. But you see that? Look at that. Why does... Ah, that's crazy, man. In addition, retirees reported average monthly income expenditures of 26% spent on food, 12% on health insurance, and out-of-pocket medical costs, 11% on transportation, including car payments. Again, get rid of your car payment. Your transportation costs go way down. <laughs> retirees were more likely to report that their spending is much higher or a little higher than they can afford. We already talked about that. But it's still only 27%. Do you feel your current spending level is right here? This is after the pandemic and after inflation 2022. That gray. Do you feel your current spending is about the right amount for what you can afford? A little less than what I can afford. Uh, much less than I can afford. So 56, that's 67. 73% say their current spending, even after the inflation of a Biden Oh, Biden in the pandemic, 73% send their spending is about what they can afford or less. I, I don't know how you can look at that any other way as positive news. 22% says a little higher than they can afford. And 5% says a lot higher than they can afford. I, I just, the people are going to look at that and say, oh, look. I, I mean, again, I'm going to do a video to show you. They say, oh, Biden was responsible for a 59% in, uh, increase and crushing levels of retirement spending. And you'll see, watch the views go through the roof there. Because no one's gonna watch this, because it's positive. Well, more than half the retirees said they're spending across an array of categories was about what they expected before retirement. Many reported higher than expected expenses. Okay, and this is where EBRI pisses me off. Approximately 26% said they are spending more than expected on housing costs and health insurance. In addition, 20% are saying they're spending more than on medical bills. Okay, so 20, because they all, Medicare is free. No, it's not. That's Bernie Sanders, AOC, and all these Elizabeth Warren idiots. Medicare is free. No, it's freaking expensive, dude. It's going to cost you 500 bucks a month per person. Crazy how people don't know this. But, so, I like how they say the look. 20, what was it, right here? Where was it, right? 22% say they're spending more than anticipated. 27% when you factor in both these. And yet 17% are spending le less than anticipated. Now, it's a little bit higher, right? Not significant enough to sink the ship. Dude. It's crazy. But we're going to focus on that little bit higher. Let's keep going. In 2022, 27% said they increased their essential spending since the start of the pandemic. 55% said they have not changed anything. And 18% said they have decreased their essential spending. Well, how could that possibly be? You can't decrease your spending. The 4% rules com comprise of your spending goes up each and every year of inflation. Approximately 20% uh, of retirees have experienced unexpected expenses since they retired. Since 29% said housing costs were more than expected and 27% said health care costs above normal, uh, they had health care needs above normal expenses, uh, this is a finding consistent with earlier studies. Okay, all right. About 20% have experienced unexpected expenses. That's why I have emergency funds. I mean, no one's... <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, this was... Um... Retirees were asked whether their standard of living in retirement is higher, the same, or lower than when they were working. This is actually another thing that ticks me off. Over half said their, their standard of living is the same. Nearly one in three said it's lower. All right? At the same time, fewer retirees said their standard of living is higher. Uh, they have ten percent. Pablo, ten percent say their standard of living is higher. A half uh, was a what was it? Uh, half was in here someplace. About half said their standard. Fifty-eight percent is the same. So sixty-eight percent say their standard of living is higher or the same. That's over two thirds. Thirty-two percent said my standard of living is lower. My standard of living will be lower when I retire because I won't spend as much. Dude. It's just that simple. While more than half indicated strong satisfaction with life and retirement, half indicated an 8, 9, or 10 rating on a scale. This was 9 percentage points lower than in 2020. Oh, my goodness. Similarly, more retirees reported moderate satisfaction. So what happened was 
we had 16 percent or right here in 2020 49 percent said they had a eight or higher satisfaction rate now it's only 42 percent where did that seven percent go well now we have 42 percent is now moderately happy in retirement where before it's 39 so they went from here to there a few went to, uh, they're not they're not happy in retirement. Look at that, still 84% are moderately happy retired. I, there's just no other way around that. Dude. So I mean, again, what happened was the people who were eight or higher, they went down to, to moderately happy. They were very happy, they went to moderately happy. A few people went from moderately happy or to, uh, to not happy in retirement. The vast majority are happy in retirement. Uh, the 2020 spending retirement reels. I, I got to go to life expectancy. This, I just, I got, you're going to get a chuck out of this here. Hold on a second. Um, actually, yeah. retirees were more likely to report longer life expectancies in 2022 as compared to 2020. Well, that's good. I guess because the pandemic's behind, they're not scared. While 18% retirees had life expectancies of 79 or younger, 50% said they expect to live until 80 to 89. I, that's ready to go. Yeah, 50% of retirees said they expect to live between 80 and 89 years old. More retirees expected to live past 90, okay? For comparison, uh, the, the, if you are a 62-year-old male, your life expectancy is 82 years old. You'll live until you're, uh, you'll live 20 years. If you're a 62-year-old female, your life expectancy is 23. Interesting. This is chuckle. I've got to laugh at this. Black retirees were three times as likely to report having a life expectancy of 100 years or longer. 8% <laughs> of the population thought they're going to live to 100. Yet blacks were three times as likely to expect they're going to live to 100. Where is the, I, that is, there's no evidence of that at all. In fact, if you look at life expectancies, blacks have the lowest in the United States. It's uh, actually, it, it ticks me off here because I follow this guy, Kevin uh, Drum, who's a liberal. I like him, actually. And he showed that uh, the life expectancies in the Trump states were lower than the life expectancies in the Biden states. And basically saying Trump voters are, are dying sooner than non-Trump voters. I, I, I sit there at the level of absurdity of that claim, uh, Kevin Drum. I just, this guy's smarter than this. It's, it's a way to show his, because he's, not always left wing. So I think this is a way to show his left wing supporters like, look, I'm still with you. Trump life, ex Trump state voters life expectancies are lower than Biden state voter life expectancies. Thus, idiots will make the claim that Trump voters live less long, don't live as long. I, I, not to say, I'm not going to say what the obvious reasoning for that is, Kevin, the fact you can't see this either you're being disingenuous or you're completely ignorant or you've been living in a hoity-toity white community your entire life. There's no other way around that because once you come to the South, it's a whole lot different, dude. And we see we have tons of Trump voters in the South, but we also have tons of Biden voters in the South, if you know what I'm saying. Fulton County, where I live, predominantly a Biden voter. They're still in Georgia. Well, I guess you could say Georgia now, a Biden state. But either way, Mississippi. Go to Jackson, Mississippi. The life expectancy there is what? 10? You have the life expectancy in if you live in where, I don't know, where Trent Lott's from. The rich people part of Mississippi is a hell of a lot longer. So the, to make that equation that Trump voters live less long because they live in the South and the South has less higher life expectancies is, is it's embarrassingly dumb. And I just, I, 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 I just reading it, it's just frustrates me. All right. So let's go to the conclusion here. All right, we're going to see here that uh, this, uh, the spending and retirement survey reveals that certain measures of retiree well-being has stagnated or declined since the pandemic. Specifically, the average ratings uh, for alignment and satisfaction have declined. That's true. While more retirees report that spending has increased and is higher than they can afford, inflation appears to be a major driver of the misalignment. Yep. A double-edged sword that undoubtedly increases actual spending, but redu also reduces spending, likely out of desire to protect future purchasing power. 100%. Anyway, that's a great thing. I'll, uh, I'm not sure I can link this because I have it saved in my own file. But if I can find it, I'll link it. Good stuff by EBRI. I think they overestimate the negative more so than they should. But, dude, that's it, man. That's your retirement in a nutshell. It's good. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.